G'day boys and girls, if you've just popped over here from my other channel, Tools and Stuff, hello again. Um, if you're not familiar with Tools and Stuff, that's my main channel, this is one of my B channels. Tools and Stuff, the link will be down there, maybe up in the top here. Oh, wait on. Better. Today we're going to look at this Ryobi inflator slash blower, and we're going to put it up against the Makita equivalent and see which one blows hardest. The Ryobi is the R18VI, that's pretty simple isn't it? Ryobi 18 volt inflator dash zero because it was a skin or in the states it is the P738. The Makita is the DAS180 or in the states it'll be the XSA01 I think. Always a little bit tricky with these tools that haven't been released yet. Right, a quick look at the tools before we use them, see what the differences are. The Makita has four modes, it has a lockable trigger, it has a variable speed trigger, it has a trigger lock, it has a light on the front, it comes with five different nozzles for blowing all sorts of different things, you can get a HEPA filter for the back, you can get other attachments for the back for sucking things out, you can buy all sorts of different attachments for it. And looking at the Ryobi, it comes with two attachments, one is on the tool here, the pinch valve that goes over the end of that one and that one is a inflator or deflator for airbeds and other large inflatable devices. You inflate from this end, you deflate from the top. It has a trigger which isn't really a trigger, it's an on off switch if you hear it there. It's a micro switch inside here. It is a brushed tool. The Makita is, of course, brushless. It doesn't have a light unless you count the sparks that come out of it from the brushes. Um, it doesn't have any variable speed trigger because, as I say, it's just on off and it only has the one speed. So it's just on or off, all or nothing. Let's see which one can blow up a double air mattress the quickest. So, Makita won that round. Deflation speeds are the same as the inflation speeds, so I'm not going to bore you with that by putting it in the video. Next up, let's just see how far away these can blow something over from, to see which one's got the longest blow. Now, because I don't have a 5 amp hour Ryobi battery, I figured the fairest test for this would be to have a Makita 5 amp hour battery on the Makita and on the Ryobi. Another Makita 5 amp hour battery. Both freshly charged, ready to go. Let's do this. Right, the Lego test track is set up. We have the target one meter away from the blowers. I'm going to start off with the Ryobi and see if it can move this little Lego cart. Three, two, one. Well, nothing too overwhelming there, but it slowly pushed it along. It got further than I thought it was going to go. Makita time. Okay, the cart is back at the one meter position. Let's go. Well, run out of track. I think that's pretty definitive. I will try it hard up against the blowers though, just to see what that looks like. Ryobi, point blank. Let's go. Still didn't make it to the end. Point blank range, go! Shit. <laughs> Smash that up. Okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty. This is about a third of the price of the Makita. It 
blows up volume wise if we take the airbed test at um, about two and a half times slower than the Makita and blowing along the track it's sort of about the same I'd say you know so you're paying a little bit of a premium for the Makita but build quality wise well there's no competition of course this just feels like a flimsy piece of junk let's um, have a wee close up here shall we and just see if we can <laughs> I mean, look at that you can just prize it apart so hmm it's cheap it is built to a price of course like everything is and it's so light let's test the weight here Makita just over 800 grams Ryobi 300 300 grams it's got to be one of the lightest cordless power tools you can buy what else is there to say about it this this annoys me why why do you need a stupid little ridge in the handle let me put my fingers where I want to put them if I want two up there look that's now in the way I've got to spread my fingers out why why Ryobi totally unnecessary why isn't that just straight down like like most tools I don't know why they did that it just I don't know is it because they stuffed up putting the screw in I mean it's just ugh. It's got over molding in some weird places as well this sort of TP I don't know if it is TP it's a bit feels weird um, over molding around here which is unnecessary it's got the over molding on the top here which is nice so if you lay it down you're not going to damage anything just on there but only on the one side <laughs> nothing on this side so yeah kind of defeats the purpose doesn't it of bothering putting it on that side who wants to see what's actually in this thing I mean there can't be much in there can there There's, you know very little space Let's have a wee nosy. Quite a lot of screws in it for such a tiny tool and now I need to break the sticker on the top and the bottom. You do that so they know if you've broken into the damn thing. Void your warranty. Warranty smarranty. Who needs warranties, eh? I'm sure it'll last forever. It's a Ryobi! <laughs> Yes, genuinely, there are people that think this is a top brand. Now, the um, plastic, as a did I say it? I mean, it's it's cheap. You can feel it's just cheap. It's shitty ABS or something. The Makita is tall plastic. You know, it, it's PA6 with 30% glass. This, I couldn't find anything on the outside, and on the inside there will be a mark, hopefully, ABS. Yeah, so it's just very flimsy I could, ooh, I could snap that very very easily lots of little black marks there from the over molding to anchor that in it's all right and the unit itself there's your battery connector far out <laughs> is that what my Ryobi battery connector look like holy moly not a lot there there is your switch not a trigger just a switch as I said earlier and the blower itself. Well, oh, that's nothing. That's it. Look at it. <laughs> that's the whole unit. Look, there, there's everything. That's the whole guts of it. It's surprising that it even weighs 300 grams, really. Not a lot to it. Not a lot at all. Where'd that spring come from? Remember where to put that? Oh, that's probably just off the trigger. Yeah. There's not too much you can say about that, eh? Yeah, there's no big fancy potted board or anything. Um, I'll show you what the inside of the Makita looks like. Uh, I'm not going to pull it apart right now, but I pulled it apart once before. So let's cut to that footage and you can see what the inside of the Makita looks like. So as you can see, the Makita, a little bit more substantial. That's why it's a bit more expensive than this thing. Now can I work out how to put this complex unit back together? Because the switch goes on and stays on with the Ryobi when you put a battery on, it will just start up. <laughs> or not. Maybe it will die. Oh. Oh, this power stack battery. 
Doesn't like the power stack battery. Two lights. Put it on the tool. <laughs> nah. She ain't gonna work with a 5 amp hour power stack. Look at that, it hates it. Let's try the old 1.7. The original little 1.7 power stack. Fully charged. Well, that works fine. Five back on. just doesn't quite like that battery and as you heard it had less power than the 1.7 it's interesting sounds way gruntier so something interesting going on there poor old Ryobi doesn't like the 5 amp power power stack so is this worth three times more than this well most definitely in my opinion if it didn't last three times longer than this I'd be very disappointed if you are interested in this or this or the 40 volt version I will put whatever links I can find to whatever country you might be in hopefully down in the description and I'll see you all on another one whenever cheers guys don't forget, if you want the full review of this or this, take a look at my other channel tools and stuff. Take a look down in the description. Take a look up here. There'll be stuff somewhere. See you later.